So going back there, when you when you you know, like I said, kind of a weird episode. Did you know, like, oh, we're going five, definitely. We're going all five here. Or did you kind of make yeah. that up as you were going? Yeah, I know as soon as the fight's over. I mean, I I write all these notes and 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 you know during the fights and um, I had written the notes on that fight going into the third round. I could just tell, you know, and, and, and that kid from South Africa was a highly toted prospect. You know, you just, you never know. Bad night, you know, we, we all have them. Sometimes you, you know, you didn't sleep right or you just can't get off or got exhausted because, you know, he took the, almost the whole five minutes on, on, a, on a graze, which I can't comment on that, believe me. Any guy who, being a guy, you know, so, you know, you just got to get hit the right way and anything is possible. But that guy looked off all night and just, he probably just had a bad night. Who knows? But that's how it goes. The other kid stepped up, took it on short notice after fighting heavyweight two weeks before that. Now he's at 186. He looks like he should be 170. Kid's a dog. Why not give him the opportunity? Give him the shot. He came here and, and did what he's supposed to do. It would be interesting. I mean, like you said, you think he should make 170. He said, we'll go put... What if you find out that you go to the PI and they're like, nah, man, he's a middleweight. He can't. Does, do you- then he fights at 185, yeah. Yeah, then he fights at 185. But he looks, listen, I'm pretty good at looking at guys and saying, I mean, did you see the size difference between those two? I mean, that guy was a monster compared to him. And, uh, you know, he, he won all three rounds. Yeah. Uh, finished with a huge uh, finish, obviously spectacular night. I guess what did you think of uh, Brinson's performance? Yeah, he, he looked incredible. I mean, he was screaming at me in the back there because I was talking to the other kids saying, we'll bring you back. And you got screwed. We'll make this right by you. And uh, he was screaming at me. And uh, wow. And those guys were banging, too. They, they were going at it. It was a great fight. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the like, surly, the, the early stoppage, like you mentioned. Um, so any hesitation? I mean, I think I was going to ask you, would you bring the other guy back? But you already announced you're going to bring the other guy back. So I guess when you see that happen, knowing we didn't even really get to see the fight play out, is that a tough call either way for you? The stakes are so high here on Tuesday nights, so high. And to come in with an 8-1 and one record and then go out off a referee's mistake, and, you know, I don't know what the referee saw or what he thought or whatever, but it was a really bad stoppage. I mean, you know, we have the, the luxury of replay and, and everything else. Two out of the three punches he, la- he threw after didn't even land. Guy was, you know, when you go down, you're still up on your hands and trying to get up. It's, yeah, that was a bad stoppage. So, Ramon will get another shot. Very cool. <clears throat> uh, I did want to ask you about Gene Silva in the second fight. Uh, obviously, looked spectacular, but, but couldn't get the fight finished. And then I almost wondered if uh, kind of the interesting character that he was in there with the barking and the, and the you know, showboating might upset you a little bit or, or might, you might not like the guy because of that. No, I, 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 you know. If there's too much of that stuff, I don't like it. If you're doing too much of that stuff and not fighting, that guy was doing it. It was almost like, um, it reminded me of a guy, you know, he's he's only 26, but the other kid's only 21. He had a little bit more of that experience and kind of getting in his head more gamemanship than, than, than showing off because he was doing serious damage, elbows and, 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 and kicks and punches and kept moving forward. Didn't finish the fight, but definitely tried to finish the fight. Throw everything with bad intentions. And, you know, um, yeah, I, 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 none of that bothered me. Hand speed was unbelievable. Yeah, very entertaining. Uh, awesome. Well, I want to ask you a couple outside of tonight as well. We got the big uh, USC 293, obviously, this weekend. Um, a lot of talk coming this weekend. Israel Adesanya, is he the greatest middleweight of all time? Uh, obviously, Anderson Silva, pretty, pretty amazing. Where do you stand on that? And, I mean, does this weekend help? you know, solidify any of that argument. Yeah, well, one of the things, you, you know, it's hard to talk about that stuff until a guy's done with his career. The, the one thing that about Israel, and I say it all the time, he always wants to fight. As soon as the fight's over, you know, a lot of these guys take their time. Some guys fight twice, once a year. This kid, as soon as the fight is over, he's already in the back telling Hunter what he wants next, where he wants to go next, and who he wants to fight next, and he wants to fight in three months. Listen, he, he's, he's pushing, you know, he, he's creating a serious legacy for himself. He's actually starting to, after Strickland, he's almost cleaned out the division. Yeah, yeah. Do you, you know, obviously we initially thought this would be the Drigas Duplessis fight. Drigas couldn't take the fight. 
do you look at him as still the number one contender, like winner, or, you know, whoever comes out of this weekend that Drinkus would be next? You know how much I love when guys turn down fights. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens on Saturday, and then we'll go from there. Nice. Last couple I did want to ask you about Paris. Um, the crowd on TV seemed like it was one of the most insane uh, atmospheres ever. What can you say about it's true. I mean, it, it, it was incredible. Uh, w whether you were there live or on television, you felt it. You could tell it was electric. And, uh, yeah, who, who would have thought that, that, that France would become uh, such a great, um, you know, experience to see live. But the energy, the chants during the fights, you know, and they were saying, like, from the first fight of the night, the place was like 95% full the first fight of the night. So, awesome. Nice. And the gate. I mean, <clears throat> we had the record. The NBA came in and beat us. Then we came back and beat the NBA. So, um, good shit. Very cool. The last one I wanted to ask you about Paris. Menon Fioro uh, had, had a big win there over Rose Nami Yunus. Now the discussion is, is Manon or Aaron Blanchfield kind of the leader yep. as far as number one contender goes? Still got a title fight to play out in a couple of weeks anyway, yep. but um, who do you – do you see a, a number one contender out of those two? Yeah, it's tough. I mean, you're, you're right. I mean, bo both coming off big wins. So, um, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how it's, it's – it's a great position for us to be in. Hi, Dana. Hi. Gotcha. Got it. All right. Um, I'm just curious. You know, we were just talking about uh, – I was wondering if you could talk to me about – uh, Rose, what's next for Rose? Do you feel like she should stay at flyweight? She should go back to strawweight? What, what are your thoughts there? Rose is going to drive here from Denver and have dinner with me. We're going to get together and have dinner and talk and see what's next and hang out. Awesome. Um, there was also some news out of Australia that Sean Strickland punched a fan. He says he did it. Um, are you guys keeping an extra eye on him? Are you worried about him wandering around there? Do you know where the news came from that he punched a fan? Yeah. From him. Yeah. 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 He's a beauty. Um, <laughs> he uh, played it up more than whatever it was jokingly, and the fan and him are cool. And so, yeah, so because I, 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 going into this, I knew. I knew what this week was going to be like. And yes, we're, we're prepared for it. And, yes, we have people around him now, so he won't be punching people in the stomach anymore. I for fun or not for fun. I was wondering if you could comment on um, Connor getting his black belt yesterday. Oh, shit. I didn't even know that. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. That's it for me. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Dana. Yep. Uh, I wanted to go back to that second fight um, with Kevin. You said that, uh, you know, you were very uh, impressed by him. It, does he go back to the regional, regional scene, win a couple? And yeah, yeah, yeah. He's young. He's 21 years old. You know, he's a kid that, you know, I was talking last week about the kid that was too young. But this kid, if he would have won this fight tonight, I, 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 I probably would have signed him. But what he needs to do is, and I don't, again, it's a whole different ball game when you get here. Sometimes shit flies out the window. Sometimes you don't feel right. The nerves, the whatever it might be. But he looked very one-dimensional tonight. That one dimension was pretty badass, tough, durable. Hard puncher, um, got hit with fucking everything tonight and, and stood in front of him, threw no leg kicks. I mean, he should have started chopping leg kicks from the first round. Just a lot of things that, that he could um, round up his game more. And once you give this kid's 21, imagine what he's going to look like when he's 23. He just, you know, he's got he's to he's tweak some things. But that's completely normal for a 21-year-old kid. So do you see him kind of, you know, going back on the regional scene and then coming straight to the UFC or? or? Oh, I have no idea. He, but the, 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 the reality is this. In all the times that you've ever watched the Contender Series, where have you seen me start with the guy who lost before I talked about the guy who won and the guy that we're actually bringing in? So I truly believe that this kid has a big future in this sport. You know, um, I don't know his training situation. I don't know what happened with him tonight. Is he one-dimensional? Did he just freeze up tonight? I don't know any of these questions. Only him and his team know that. But my assessment of tonight, that's what I saw. Main event winner was a plus 500 underdog. Beat the guy that was a minus 700. There's a lot of underdogs that are winning this season. I mean, like, what's that say? It says if you're a degenerate gambler, the contender series is where you should be on Tuesday nights. <laughs> 
Good point, good point. Um, and then finally, I just wanted your thoughts on, um, so Saudi Arabia put $100 million into the PSL, and you know Saudi is putting a lot of money into in golf, soccer, uh, the Fury, Fury Tyson. Um, I just wanted your thoughts on Saudi you know, coming into global sports and putting money into it. Yeah, they've also, um, you know, over the last, I don't know how many years, dropped billions into their infrastructure there and creating, uh, you know, a place where they want tourists, you know, trying to make it a, a, a destination for tourism. And, I mean, Las Vegas is a perfect example. Look at what's happened here since sports teams have landed here and, and you know, and, and uh, you know, th th they're making moves. They, they, they got probably more money than anywhere else in the world, and, you know, I get it. Hey, Dana. Yep. I want to read you a quote. Quote, UFC is a great company, but PFL is a great company. We do everything they do, and we do some things better. One, we pay better, and two, you're in control in the PFL. You're not under somebody's thumb. What you do inside the cage controls your future, end quote. That was from PFL CEO. What, what was the end of it? What did it say? What you do inside the cage controls your future. And what so, you do inside the cage can what? Controls your future. Got it. So that was from PFL CEO Don Davis. And so I don't know if you've heard that quote yet today, but I just was wondering what your initial thoughts were. No. Um, well, there's one of two things in that. There's either a lot of delusion <laughs> or uh, he's uninformed. Um, Almost everything in that, in that uh, statement is incorrect, except for what happens in the cage determines your future. I think that's the only right thing that he said. And, and you know what? Good for him. Get out there. Fucking let's fire it up. Let's, you know, whatever. It's all good. Um, yeah, listen, I, I've said this before about the PFL. I, uh, I, I have no beef with those guys. Those guys have always been stand-up guys and, and, and have always been uh, classy when it comes to, to, to the business. Um, you know, these guys are, are, are in this to compete with us. And uh, I, I respect that. And over here. We're halfway through the season seven of the Contender Series. It seems like it's flown by. Are there any moments that have stood out to you thus far? And uh, what do you make of this first half of the season? What stands out to me so far in, in – in, first in, five in, episodes. In the first five, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I think that, uh, you know, if you look back at, at the history of the Contender Series and, and what we've built here, you know, a couple of world champions now, tons of, uh, of uh, top 15 guys and girls. And when we have the boards in the war room, you know, there's different colors. There's blue everywhere. Blue is Contender Series. So th this show has been a monster feeder system for us and, and, and bringing in high quality talent. You know, everybody that comes in off this show has the ability to break into the top 10 or be a world champion. So it's, it's, it's one of the reasons that I, I, I love watching this every Tuesday. You know, tonight, I mean, I'm just looking at this page right here. We got Silva and, and, and Kevin, you got 10 and two versus 11 and 0. You know what I mean? These are the kind of guys that are coming in and somebody's gonna win. You know, and, and, and now it's Silva, who's, who's 11 and 2, and now he's going to face somebody in the UFC. So it's, you know, these guys come right in. I mean, when you look at, uh, um, you know, Hibero in the last fight, this guy's 26 years old, and he's got 20 fights. He's got 20 fights right now with 100% finish rate, and he is a monster. This guy comes in and goes for it. He can fight fight almost anybody right now in the top 15. Yeah, I wouldn't disagree with you. And uh, I want to piggyback on the France question. Do you think the France crowd and just the, that arena, everything, do you think they deserve a pay-per-view now after that event? Absolutely. Awesome. And uh, after UFC 293, we have Noche UFC. Just want to get your thoughts on how excited you are to have that first Mexican independence event. Yeah. I mean, obviously, that's why we're doing it. It wasn't planned. It wasn't scheduled. You know, I ripped the whole schedule around to make this thing happen, put pressure on the boys to, to build a card um, for, 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 that, uh, for that event. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And when you look at, you know, the question that was asked of me earlier about um, which girl is next, 
you know, that whole division is fun based off what happens that night uh, between uh, Grazo and Shevchenko. And there's a lot of different things that we can do based off the winner of that fight. So it's a good position to be in. And I know last week you were talking about some possible locations and stuff. One of the fighters who won their contract last week said they heard something about Twin Cities. Is that uh, confirmed? You guys are going to go to Twin Cities again? Is that, what was the question? Yeah, correct. To, to fight where? Minneapolis. 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 Um, Minneapolis. Yeah, no. <laughs> Thank you. That's not correct. Hey, Dana, just one quick one I want to ask you with the whole PFL Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia thing that got brought up. You've always been, like, not taking shots at the PFL, but if Saudi Arabia decides to empty the bank, right, they've got essentially unlimited financial resources. This is just $100 million, but do you view them as a potential viable competitor if they decide we're going to open up the, the checkbook and we're, we're going to try to be the UFC? There, there, there's been plenty of people that have opened the checkbook, you know, to, to, to be a competitor. It's, it's not about money. There's so many different th – as I sit back and being in this for 23 years and I watch everything that is done wrong, okay? And m one, of the, one of the big things – one of the big things he said in there, which is absolutely false, is that they pay more than the UFC, which is absolutely positively not true, but – um, I do see them waste unbelievable amounts of money. Um, and you can only waste unbelievable amounts of money for so long, no matter how much money somebody has. It's just, if you go in the dictionary and look up the word business, okay, there's business and then there's charities. I'm involved in both. I run a business, and I do lots of things for charity. Most of these other guys are all running charities, not businesses. And uh, like I say, you can only do that for so long before it, before it runs out and it ends. So we will see. You know, I've seen the, you guys, when you guys ask me these kind of questions, you ask me like this is the first time I've seen things like this, or the first time somebody with money was getting involved. It's about a lot more than money. Kind of piggybacking off of the PFL talks, there was all these rumors of the PFL talking about purchasing Bellator, that Bellator was possibly up for sale. If they are, in fact, or were, in fact, up for sale, has the UFC expressed any interest in possibly buying out Bellator? Why, on God's green fucking earth, would anybody buy Bellator? So when we were just talking about business and making the right moves and making right decisions, there's been lots of bad ones. Bellator would be one of the fucking biggest. Why anybody would buy Bellator is beside me. But, hey, what do I know. Let's sit back and see how this plays out. I'm excited. Did you see the price point was $500 million for, be for did, Bellator? Did, did I say what? There was a price point of $500 million for Bellator. Bellator is $500 million? Awesome. Sounds like a, like a steal. <laughs> Sounds like a fucking steal. <laughs> Buy that thing quick before who else does? Come on, you guys. This is fucking silly. Silly. One follow-up. Um, <clears throat> with the heavyweight division right now, do you, would you say it's, it's probably in the best place it's been in, in in a few years? You got Pavlovich, Aspinall gone, uh, the winner of uh, Curtis Blades and Almeida, like, it's, do you think the top of the, the, the division's at the best? It's yeah. I, you know, I, I think right now, again, sitting here on a Tuesday night talking to you guys about this stuff, as you start to look at basically all. I mean, we had matchmaking today. And as you look at all the different divisions, you know, um, there, there's, there, there's a lot of exciting fights right now in all these divisions. With matchmaking the top of the division. Well, that's the thing that I was telling you guys last Tuesday, I think. You know, I, I was sitting there in matchmaking last week, and we're working. Actually, it wasn't matchmaking. We were looking at the schedule. We were looking at the schedule last week of where I wanted to go, where I didn't want to go, what fights, you know, this, that, and everything else. And we were like, holy shit. Every year we go, how do we beat this year? And then as you start looking into what's possible next year, it's absolutely fascinating. It's, you know, 
real life stories as they play out are better than any script you could ever write. And that's what makes the sport so awesome. With matchmaking, like, you know, the, the next title fight um, or like a, a, a contender fight, you know, with Pavlovich or gone or Aspinall, like are, obviously you're waiting to see what happens with Jones and, and Stipe, but, you know, there's this thing that John, that John might retire or they both might retire. Like, are you just waiting to see what happens with that before you match up a number one contender fight? Yes. 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 <laughs> you know, um, obviously the Sean O'Malley win is very still fresh in everyone's minds, but I want to ask you about Aljamain Sterling, right? What are your thoughts about his, his run as a champion, just as a champion for the UFC? I mean, he kind of overcame some negative thoughts from other people and just outside noise. What, what are my thoughts on? Yeah, like, as far as what? And like all the negative uh, criticism he received as a champion. Negative criticism on him? So here's the thing with, with Sterling, you know, when you, when, I'll tell you my personal experience. So when you sit down with, with Al Jermaine one-on-one -on -one and, you know, you're whatever, he's a great guy. He's a great kid, very likable, everything else. Decisions he makes in public and things that he says in public do not make him the most popular guy on the roster. Um, and it's the weirdest thing. It's, I don't know if it's... Uh, self-sabotage or, or what it is, you know, it's just, he always seems to say the wrong things, you know, in times when if he said even remotely close to the right things, people would love him, you know what I mean? I always say about the kid, kid's a good looking kid, he's got a great physique, you know, he, he, he um, you know, when you sit down with him one-on-one, -on -one, he's a good kid, but in public, he just, he can't help himself. Would you have some advice for him or? Ah. No. I mean, listen, he's done, he's done pretty well without my advice. I mean, look at what the kid's accomplished. He's made a lot of money. And, uh, you know, and you, you know how I feel about the whole me and Marab are friends, you know, bullshit. But, uh, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't dislike um, Aljo. You know what I mean? Like I said, one-on-one, -on -one, he's a good dude. Thank you. Good? Uh, Real quick. Um, weeks ago, there was traction on it. I don't think I've heard anything since. I was curious if you had any updates on Zuckerberg and uh, Elon Musk and anything like that. No updates. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>